Welcome, welcome. Is the sound okay? All right, so we here. Welcome to Club Talks, brought to you by BBC Ice Cream and Lobos Tequila. I'm Goldie Harris. Uh-huh. I'm Goldie Harris, and today we're celebrating BBC's fall collection launch, and we're sitting down with R&B artist Aaron Ray to speak about music, fashion, and being a father, and some more cool things. Let's give it up for Aaron, y'all. So first things first, how you feeling? I'm feeling great, I'm blessed, man. Um, I love New York, I love coming here. Every time I, get, I come through, it's, um, it's, I, like it, I like it more every time. So anytime I get to come to New York and bless it and just be around this uh, environment, it's, it's, it's cool, man. So you're on tour right now, where are you traveling from? This mic going crazy right now. Um, but yeah, I'm touring, um, I just came from Boston. Um, I started, I was supposed to start in Toronto, but I had to postpone it due to like some personal shit. But um, yeah, we started in Boston, it was a great show. And um, you know, we got the Bowery tomorrow, it's pretty much sold out. If, if you wanna come through, so a couple <laughs> tickets left, go get them, you know, it should be a great show. Um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm blessed. And uh, we got Atlanta next, Cincinnati, it's my hometown and shit. Um, excuse my language. Um, and. Uh, a couple other cities, you know. Fire, so I have a couple questions here for you. I'm gonna kick it off, so. This summer, you released Hello Poison. Mm -hmm. You tapped artists like D Smoke, yeah. Blast, Ari Lennox, Ty Dolla Sign, yeah. and a few more. So tell us the meaning behind the title and the project at large. Man, well, Hello Poison, you know, I'll start from here. I, I was calling love poison for the longest because I was in my single bag, like right at the top of the pandemic. And I was just hating on shit. Just, you know, I, I was not looking for anything, you know, uh, in a relationship spot. But then, um, you know, I, I met this lady at a party and uh, shit, I was with her every day after that, you know, for at least a year and a half. So it was like basically like, hello, love, but Hello, Poison, and it should end up being like the greatest, the best relationship I've been in so far. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of, you know, playing off of that, you know. And I, I felt like it sounded good, because I had Platinum Fire and then I got Hello, Poison, so kind of try to keep that trend in a way. Did you guys meet during COVID? Yes. Okay, so Well, actually, no, no. I met her like a year before, but I wanted her, and she did not, she was not fucking with me. She rejected me. <laughs> And you know, so I just, I guess I stayed at it and that day I was, I was different. I was talking about like COVID relationships. I feel like if you found love during COVID, those relationships like are twice as intense because like we had like nowhere to go and nothing to do. So all you yeah. did was spend time with that person. Facts. So the themes of your project is inspired by real life. For sure. So uh, you told me you were single, mm -hmm. right? And you have a beautiful son. Yeah. What is uh, your secrets? Your secret to balancing your music career and being a father? Man, that's a good one. Um, you know, he just started kindergarten, so I'm really in it, like taking him to school, picking him up every day, and um, you know, right before here, like I'm still stuck in dad mode right now. Like it's hard for me not to call him and you know and try to just see see what's going on. You know, I call him every day. Every time I wake up, it's it's him. Every time I'm about to go to sleep, it's him. Um, but it's not that hard when you, you know, you got love. It's just really, are you gonna put in the work? Are you gonna do it, you know? And, um, you know, I, I, I love to step up to the plate, especially anything that has to do with my son. And, um, you know, he's a good kid too, so he doesn't really do too, he's not, he's got a great personality, he's real nice, so I don't really have to look after too crazy, but he's just, you know, that's my rider. We go everywhere together and, uh, you know, I'm still learning, but it's pretty easy to me. You know, I've always wanted to work. I, I got my studio at home, so, you know, I did this whole album at the crib, so I really don't have to go anywhere if I don't need to, but, you know, um, you know, it's easy. I got, I got a good support system, too, you know. And his mother's great, too, so, you know, that works. That's dope. Shout out to the, the positive co-parents out here. Come on now. So you said that, you know, you were in um, a really dope relationship. What's your secret to a healthy relationship, especially in like this generation? That's, that's hard. It's, it's hard to have an answer to that, but it's really, to me, it's transparency, being honest. Because I've learned a lot of the times when I go into something trying to, um, I guess, cater to 
the, that situation or that person, it don't ever really work, or just telling somebody what they want to hear, that shit don't work no more. You kind of got to be smarter than that. You got to be, you know, I'm just honest and transparent in, in what we were doing, and she was too. So it really helped with my confidence and, you know, being there, because she wasn't tripping. Like, we, if we fucking with somebody, we talking to somebody, like, we say it, or, you know, like, it's not something we, we, we kept from each other. So I guess from the top, from the beginning, like, it was just very transparent and what we, you know, what we liked, what we were on, like, and we just, you know, we, we pushed with that. And then just staying faithful, too, because, I realize like that's it just it just brings a lot of like I guess energy that you don't want into the curb and just not arguing too like having a, being able to communicate like, communication is key with any relationship and that's what I'm really learning with that it's just you know communicate man like say what you feel but you ain't got to yell or scream and do nothing like that there's a way to get through and I and I I learned that so you know, it took some years, but because I've I seen it different. I grew up different. I'm from the Midwest. Them niggas is wild. They talk crazy. But, you know, I think, you know, it's just, you know, learning and just communicating. And, uh, you know, sex is great, too. You know, you got to keep that together. Absolutely. Yeah. But. Yeah, I think um, communication is important uh, mm -hmm. in any relationship that you're in. And you speak about, like, yelling. I don't think you need to yell for someone to hear you. And if that's the case, I need to revisit what y'all doing. Yeah, for sure. You got to get up out of there. It's not it. Let's circle back to the project. What mm -hmm. are some of your favorite songs from the project and why? Man, um, it changes every day. You know, with Hello Poison, it was such a moment in time. So I didn't really, I don't really, like, I ain't put too much into it as, as, you know, favorites or nothing like that. I just made the music and put it out. Like, I finally got to put something out within four years. But I would think my favorite, uh, my favorite records would be, the, the Blast one is, is growing up, growing on me, so a uh, bad idea. You know, I feel like that's the more, like, universal, you know, I guess easily digested song. Um, Sorry, excuse me, it's unprofessional. Um, but I also, um, you know, I like This Is Nice. Uh, I produced it all, I played bass, keys, the drums, like I really went crazy for it. And I don't play any of the instruments so for it to come out the way it did, you know, I was just shooting and I was great. And uh, there's this record called Storm on there featuring Terrace Martin, but Brandy's on the backgrounds. And I was just a blessing to be able to have her on it. and. Uh, you know, just have a, you know, a bunch of legends on the record. I really love the whole, whole thing. I, I really encourage people to listen from top to bottom just because it's a certain vibe. Um, but we got a lot of records on there. The Mood is dope. D Smoke killed his verse. I really love his lyrics on that. He, he really went in um, on such a sexy record. He still gave bars, but I was dope. Um, what else? Uh, it's, so, it's, it's a good amount on there, but I, I love it all. So you made most of these records um, in your home studio. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get a chance to collab with any of these featured artists in person? Um, man, it was pandemic time, so I'm pretty sure I did not. Yeah. Um, you know, even yeah, Childish, I work with him all the time, and even he had to send in his verse, you know what I'm saying? So it was, the pandemic kind of, you know, cut that away, but, you know, it still worked out. Actually, Van Jess. Van Jess, that record, Miss Frustration, they did come to the crib and record that there and wrote that there. So they did come to the crib, but everybody else just, we sent it or I, I pulled up on them or A&R, a and &R, producer of theirs, and you know, we just kind of swapped it out. So when you heard, um, you know, the featured, uh, the feature was cleared, which one of those features were you most excited about? Mm. Um. Who we got on there? Who else did I say? Yeah, the, it was the Brandy, like, That's honestly, because I got to talk to her right after she did it, and I was just like, damn, like, it's not too, it, not too many people get to, you know, experience that. And then her just doing backgrounds, like, she just added to the record. She didn't have to, she didn't overdo it and, you know, try to take over the record. She really just fucked with the song and got on it, and that's what I really loved. And, you know, the message after was really, really cool, too, so. You know, shout out to Brandy, man. I've always wanted to, you know, have a record with her, just be, be in a room, you know. Facts. So I'm sure you're going to leave here with some new fans. Um, so for those who haven't heard the album yet, mm -hmm. what should they expect? What kind of sounds are you exploring? 
Man, um, it's a lot of different sounds, a lot of musicality in it. You know, if you like music, if you like chords, different type of drum breaks, different type of beats, you know, like, I like the beautiful shit, so you'll find some beautiful shit. It's not too toxic. So it's really, uh, yeah, you know how everybody like that these days, <laughs> toxic. They love to use that word, dog. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's just good music, you know, great stories, and um, I think a body of work that you could, you could start at the top of your day or you could drive to it or even you're about to go home, you're taking it home, go to sleep. Like, it's a lot of vibes on there. So it's just a lot of love and, uh, yeah, a lot of great features, too. So if you like, you know, a lot of really dope female artists on there, uh, you know, if you like the Ari Lennox, Van Jess, Brandy, like, you'll get that for sure. So this is your first project in what, three or four years? It is three, I think. 2018 is when I dropped Platinum Fire, so yeah, almost four years. So let's talk about, I wanna jump into your creative process, but I, I kinda wanna dive into the idea of taking your time in uh, the music industry mm -hmm. and how you, you know, structure your release schedule. Man, you know, with this rollout, it was a bit different, you know. Um, wasn't really in my control, just how we released it, you know, when, what time, like, it's just kind of, the label kind of set that shit up. I wouldn't, to be honest, I wasn't really too happy about it, but, you know, I'm grateful that we were able to get it out in a time where at least we had the summer to do something and now we could tour with it. But, um, you know, as far as just taking my time with the music, I guess, like, I did take my time, but really, the pandemic, it hurt me, so, like, I feel like if I would have released a record like maybe a year and a half ago, it probably would have been the worst thing I ever made. I just wasn't, to me, making like some top-notch music. I felt like I was kind of just in a, in a different space, like with the world doing what it was doing. I just kind of wasn't in a like sexy bag or like, you know, everything seemed like it was coming to an end. So I was like, man, I don't know. And with my son, I just wasn't in like the best place. And then, you know, when I met, you know, this woman, that's kind of what struck you know, most of the records, you know, and then after that, that's when I had something to talk about. Yo, shout outs to Love. Love Come inspires on, some, some really great art. For sure. um, so I have to acknowledge that. Come on. But um, walk us through your creative process. When you're in the studio, when you're writing a, a song, when you're producing something, you're hearing a beat, like, how does Aaron do it? A lot of different ways. Um, this time, it was really like some from scratch. A lot of the records were like from scratch. I did with DJ Camp or it was, you know, songs, something that I could always build on, like whether it was some chords or in a drum break or just some chords, you know, we really just kind of built it out. Um, I had a few songs that I, I got like beats, like the only record that I really didn't work too hard on was the Bad Idea record and that is going crazy. So I'm like, you know, I, I have my different methods and I've, I've changed it up over time. But, um, you know, even with this next one, I feel like I'm going to take a step back and just, you know, uh, really prize, like figure out my process. You know, I love to, you know, just go in a booth, get melodies going and like, you know, freestyle. That's my shit. I don't really try to write nothing down. Um, I really just go in there and try to get the vibe. And if, you know, the first take of whatever I'm doing feels right, I I'll stick with that. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, it's pretty much it. Do you also engineer your own music, or do you have like an engineer in the studio with you? I've had engineers, but I, I, I do you know record myself, and um, I can engineer if I really need to. I've been doing that more as of late, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I love engineers because they just make things a lot easier and they make you sound way better than you actually are. So um, that's always great. So two questions that might sound the same. Um, who are a few artists that inspire the music you make today? And uh, let's name your top three dream collabs. Mm, that's a good one. Um, first and foremost, Michael Jackson is like my favorite of all time. I love Mike. Mike's crazy. Yeah. Stevie Wonder. Um, you know, I love Lionel. I love, like, I love all those soul, the soulful cats and like the real big stars. But then I'll get into like some BGs. You know what I'm saying? You said Prince. Definitely Prince for sure, um, but I, I like all types of you know music for real, and uh, you know, and I guess some modern artists. I love Frank. Frank was crazy when he was coming out. Frank always puts out good, tasteful music. You know what I'm saying? Always brings you a new vibe, like a real tasteful sound. 
And uh, man, a lot of different artists, honestly. Um, Sade, like the group is crazy. You know, that's, that's big for me, just as far as vibes, like, you know, music that sounds therapeutic. You know, that's what I really do love, you know? And um, top three collabs, future collabs that I would like. I mean, I would have loved to have one or just produced or wrote one for MJ or something like that. But um, I would love to work with um, um, SZA right now. I feel like me and her would go crazy. Um, I would love to work with Kendrick. You know, he's incredible. Um, me and Brent already got one. Um, man, uh, who? Oh yeah, Kevin Parker from Tame, for sure. Yeah, that's a great one, yeah. Fire, fire. Is that a lightning bolt tattoo there? We have matching tattoos. Oh, let's go. We're here. Yeah, I knew someone um, <laughs> So, um, at what age did you start taking music seriously? Uh, around high school, you know. Um, I always loved music, and I always did music with the homie Vel from sixth grade. Um, you know, we always made, I like recorded my first songs really with him um, in his basement and shit. Um, I can, we started taking it serious there, but I, I never really liked my voice. That was my thing. Like, I hated the way I sang. Like, I did not like it at all. My mom would just push me. Everybody would push me. And uh, I just never liked it for real. Because I love singers, and I know real singers. And I'm like, man, nah, I, I, that ain't it, you know? But, um, you know, I, to this day, I still, I'm very hard on myself. Um, but, you know, um, I think around what ninth grade 10th grade it was really when i did the x factor because like i don't really audition for nothing like even in school i was in like one big play like one big musical everything else was like something i had to do um and you know when i got with the x factor thing it just seemed like effortless like i just kept making it through everything like it just seemed like that was the path like i was like nigga like this is what you do like do it like and I'm like, all right, like, and I just kept making it through. So I'm like, all right, cool, like, uh, let me see what happens. And then they called me back for the next season after I, they, the whole thing. So that really just set it off. And I was like, all right, cool, let's let's make this a thing. And that's when I started gearing up for Berkeley and Boston. And I made it into the school, but tuition was too crazy. So I was like, forget that. that. I'm going to go to L.A. and see what I can make shake. And here we are, nine and a half years later. That's fire. Sometimes the universe has a path set out for you as much as you want to be kind of in denial about it. For sure. Um, so if you can go, like, after all that you've done up until today, if you can go back to, uh, to speak to 16-year-old Aaron, what would you tell him? If there's one thing you can tell him, what would it be? Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, be a little bit more confident, though. You know, like, really understand, like, that this is your gift. This is what you're here for. And everything takes time. Don't be so impatient, you know, because I'm very impatient. I don't like to wait for things. Um, but God has a way of, you know, you know, having his own time. So, you know, everything's worked out so far. So it's just like keep doing what you're doing. Work a little harder, too, because you – and don't get in your own way. Stay out of your own way because I've done that many a times. But we all got our, you know, our, you know, our things, our internal battles. So it's just really get out of your own head and – just keep going because everything you asking for or you talking about with your peoples is literally going to happen. So, you know. Facts. Yeah. So you mentioned that you're based in L.A. now. Yes. Let's talk about how Cincinnati has shaped you as an artist and just as a creative overall. Right. right. I mean, Cincinnati, like Ohio in general, like, you know, they got a really big, like, soulful funk type of vibe from back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Zapp and Roger, the Isleys, like that vibe like you know it was real and then you got mike and then with some gary so that whole area like it was just you know it's a lot of soulful music and then um you know it was really my mother for real like she's into everybody erica badu jill scott by you know what i'm saying like the real neo soul so she put me on for real to the real music and then i you know eventually i found love and a lot of songs like i was saying the other day like i would listen to people like I don't know, I've listened to Mac Miller, and then he sampled a song, and then I go listen to him, and that, that sample be an Empire of the Sun sample, 
And then I go listen to that, and you know, that started my way with that. And I listen to Tame, and I'll be like, this is crazy. So, and then like, like I said, the BGs, all the, the cool white groups, like them niggas, it was, it was solid too. And I, I got a thing for 80s music, which is crazy, yeah. but it's dope. So, you know, yeah. Hell yeah. So we're, we're gonna jump in to speak a bit about fashion, but before we get there, Aaron, you're glowing, so we need to know, like, what is your skin routine? Put us on it. Don't say, don't say, like, yeah, water, because I really hate, like, don't you hate, like, when people have, like, the most perfect skin, and they're just like, yeah, I just, you know, water. It's like, put us on. What's the routine? I, I wish it was human race. I need some, honestly. But um, if I'm... If I'm being real, it was like water until like I knew it, I knew it. But no, but no, but no, like as of lately I got this little Kiehl's regimen that is cool, like this Kiehl's face wash and moisturizer that I'm using and stuff. So Okay. I knew it. Like I really knew it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um yeah, so let's jump into fashion. So we're here celebrating the launch of BBC's fall collection. So walk us through what you have on right now. Um, I'm pretty sure, what are these? Y'all just hooked me up with these, honestly, <laughs> Gotex. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then uh, the dad jeans and a cut-off crop shirt. Shout out to Charlie, my stylist and shit. I, I'm really not like a super, like, I did not learn how to dress until I got to LA. I, didn't, I wasn't really crazy, you know, to be honest with you. And I'm still learning right now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, for real, I, I'm, I'm still learning right now, and uh, I'm finding a different love for it. And uh, yeah, I just like, I've, I'm learning what I like, but I like the baggy shit. I like, and then, you know, I, that's me. I used to wear hella skinny, like if you see me back in the day, I'm super tight skinny jeans with the vans and shit. The I'm colored like, skinny jeans yeah, with the vans. Yeah, yes, yes, and I was oh, super color coordinated and shit. Everything had to match, like, yeah, but no. Nah. I can see it. Yeah, I can sure. see it. I can see it. Come on. So although you're still learning, how would you describe your style right now? Um, I like it's relaxed, but you know, as times like I can go up. Like for my shows, I try to do a little bit more. Like for sure. Like for this show tomorrow, I have my own like custom thing that I made up. Um, that's gonna be cool, and uh, I'll go a little bit big. But I love the big pants. I love the big shoes, the Vans and stuff. I love Converse. That's my shit. And, um, you know, obviously, I've been a big fan of the BBC lines forever. My brother really put me on. Like, that's who, if anybody could dress in my family, it was my brother, Eris. He was really up on all of this, you know, and he was teaching kids at the, my school how to dress. So, yeah, if there was anybody I kind of learned from was him. So what are five things that you must have in your closet? Man, um... Well, I gotta have my big pants now. I gotta have the flares. I love them. Um... Uh, gotta have my crop tees. Um, uh, I mean, I, anything. Like I said, I'm still learning, man. I, I really. All right, at least top learning. two is big pants and yeah, crop tees yeah, in the yeah. closet every time. For sure. Okay, say that. Yeah. <laughs> so my final question for you before we open it up to a Q and A is, what's next for Aaron? Man. It's a good question. Well, we on tour, so right now that's that. Um, after that, I think I'm, you know, I really want to focus on, you know, um, being more behind the scenes in, in, a, in the sense of like working with different artists and, you know, you know, just seeing if I can make some other shit go. You know, to be honest, I'm quite tired of myself. I love myself, like, but to be honest, I really want to help other people go crazy and just challenge myself. Like and see if I can create a sound for someone else, and that's pretty much what I'm on. It's like, you know, doing that and then acting and, you know, whatever else you know comes into play. So, do you see yourself kind of launching your own label one day? Oh, for sure. I We're like starting it. now. Yeah. Okay. So, is this the first time you're saying that on camera that you're about to launch your own label? Oh, for sure. Okay. So we got the exclusive. For the win. All right. Fire. Fire. Yeah. So we're gonna open it up. First of all, yeah, let's let's give it up for Aaron. Let's give it up. Thank you, all man, for real. So we're gonna jump into a Q and A. Um, do we have another microphone at the DJ booth? If not, we can use my microphone. 
Okay, cool. So we're gonna use my microphone. Uh, bet, bet. So just um, if you have a question, just you know, raise your hand, and I'm gonna bring my microphone over here. Um, first of all, thank you. Um, it's really been exciting to see your journey um, because I saw you perform at the Revolt Summit in 2019. Oh yeah, that was cool. <laughs> but um, my question is for like, there are probably other musicians in here. I'm not a musician, but what advice would you give to those starting out their careers? Man, that's a good one. I would just say, you know, stay true to who you are. Don't try to bend too much to like be like, like to fit in to what's going on right now because I see a lot of like trend chasers like to where everybody's always complaining about something sounding the same so really it's about finding your sound um, one you know and team is crucial like team is crucial I've been with the best and then I've been with people who are just coming up and people who are just coming up and just hard workers always work best I've been with some of the best, biggest managers in the world and had to fire them because they don't know how to, you know, one, be truthful about what's going on. And, um, you know, and just having certain things, like right now, I'm still learning with the social media shit. That's key. You got to kind of find a way to connect even if you aren't, like, a super social media head like me. Like, man, I think I've posted the most I've ever posted today, which was two posts. You know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, you got to, you kind of got to get into that. Um, and it's just really just, you know, uh, yeah, like I said, stay true to yourself and put the work in, man. Like, that's going to show most of all, as long as you, you learn the lessons, putting the work in and not being afraid to fail because everybody does, everybody's got their stories. So you're going to fail a million times. So just make sure you get your ass back up and, you know, keep it pushing. And, uh, yeah, like I said, team is crucial and a sound is crucial too. Don't, don't like... I wouldn't reach for a moment, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't reach for a moment, reach to be here forever. So, yeah, that's what I'm on. No, for sure. Thank you, by the way. Yo, what's good? It's good to meet you. Um, nice my man. name is Nico. Uh, I was just wondering, like, where do you find, like, freedom in, like, your creative process? Man, uh, I mean, I got nothing but freedom. Luckily, like, I don't really have an A&R or somebody hold me back from what I want to do as far as being creative. Um, I just do what I want. And, you know, I ask people who I trust about, you know, if they like it or not. And hopefully there's honest people around, you know what I'm saying, and that could kind of tell you if that shit's whack or not or whatever. So it's really just, yeah, man, just you can always be free. You can do whatever you want to do like that. I don't know if there's like a box you like or something that tells you, oh, you can't do this or you can't be as free. Like I've heard some of the weirdest music in a million like in places and it's I mean, it streams way more than what I got going on. So it's like be as creative as you want to be. You know what I'm saying? It's as long as it fits you and you feel good about it. Just be creative. And I find, you know, me personally, I find a, the best. Uh, my, I, I love to work with musicians. I love to collab. That's a new thing I've been doing too because I felt like I had to do everything and like produce everything and write everything. Collab, G. Like, get some writers. Like, it's not bad to have somebody kind of helping you out who knows what they're talking about because it's all perspective too. So, like, you got to really, you know, em embrace you know, other opinions, but don't let somebody hold you back, like, from some shit either. Like, it's it's a thin line, but you can do whatever you want to do, bro. Like, you see what's going on now. You literally could get on for humming or screeching on a record, dog. Like, for real. Like, and it go crazy. TikTok is a hell of a drug. So, yeah. Okay, so I think my question is like an extension of the first one. Like mm -hmm. as an artist and a talent who loves music, genuinely loves music and making music, like initially, how did you mitigate or navigate like being an artist and someone who genuinely loves music and then being in the music business and navigating the politics of like having to figure out releases and like dealing with management and finding your voice? So that's my first question. And then my second one is like, what does success mean to you as an artist? Mm. So with the first one, first question, um, ooh, say I want just a little more time. Okay. Cause I, I kind of- So it's like, I feel like a lot of times musicians 
grow up loving to make music. They might have a talent for music, right. but that's different from actually understanding what being in the music business is and learning like, okay, now I got to think about releases sure. and being a priority in for a label and speaking sure. up and making sure I'm a priority. You know what I mean? Like, no, different. real. I mean, the business is totally different, and that's really 90% of what's going on. It's not even about the music no more. Don't let nobody lie to you. It's all about moments and who's hot right now. And one, I'm going to tell someone, like, bro, you're never a priority. You are a cash cow. You are money to them. You are literally a business, an LLC to them. You are not a priority. I don't care if you're Drake. I don't care. You've seen what happened. Soon as people didn't kind of fuck with this last album, you seen what happened. All the, the ads went away, everything. So it's really like you just got to be hot right now. You really got to understand if that shit's hot and it's moving, you're going to get the looks. If not, you got to put in the work because the label is only going to give you like a week to like really do something. And then after that, they're backing off. You know what I'm saying? They're going to let everything else speak because they're not going to one shoot all their shots at once. They're going to try to let it spread. And that's what I learned. Like if that's, it's not clicking, clicking, then you got a lot of work to do. And I'm kind of in that process right now, but luckily I got a solid team where, and I'm working on it where we like, forget that, we gonna move without you, you know? So that's where I'm at with that. It's just like, like stay on your shit, like build relationships, like things like this. You know what I'm saying? This is gonna get you to farther than a label person being like, oh, this is dope. Let's press the button on that. Because one might want you to do, like, one label person might be like, hey, it's, you know, it's lit. But then they might be lying to you. So well, somebody else might block that shit. There's so many levels to this business. And then just, man, I don't know. It's, it's, it's probably not different nowhere, but it ain't really no friends in this game. So don't, don't even think, like, that just be, like, don't think these motherfuckers are really here for you. You know what I'm saying? That's, and I'm, I'm sorry, I feel like that's negative, but it's really hard to find somebody genuinely rooting for you. Like, they could even be like, bro, I love you. I love your stuff, but then two weeks later, a month later, they songs sound exactly like yours. So watch who you have around you, you know? But the business is business. Always be on yours. Don't ever let somebody tell you, hey, you gotta chill, don't be on that. Always, especially coming out. Be always be about your business. Always be upfront, whether it's accounts, money, whatever it is. Just stay. You know what I'm saying? You are in control. It is your business. It is your company. You are the art, so you gotta treat it as such. And um, yeah, I could go on about that for hours, bro. Because this business thing is crazy. Oh, the success. What success is, is? I mean, look at this right now. Like, like this is successful to me. I didn't have anything. None of this when I started nine years ago. Like, and one thing was cool too. I just went home for like a month in Cincinnati, just like for the first time in almost ten years, and I really got to sit back and be around my family for the first time. And then you know I came back to LA and I realized what I had, and what I had built for myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't come with a car. I didn't come with a house. I didn't come with a child. I didn't come with any of the things that I, I you know, I, I have now. So that's success to me. And, you know, there, there's levels to success. There's different things, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that's where I'm at right now is just really just understanding what I've been able to build for myself and, you know, having these records on the radio and shit. Like, there's, there's levels to anything. So success is really just what you make it. It's a mindset, honestly. So I just got the signal that we have time for one more question. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to the back of the room because everyone forgets the people in the back. Um, we, yeah, 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 I don't, I'm sorry guys. There's like so many like people giving me eye contact, like please. <laughs> um, can you just pass the question? What's up, Aaron? <laughs> What's going on, G? <laughs> I got a quick question. So you said that, um, you know, you've been with like, you know, big management companies, et cetera, had to fire them. Uh, what would you say you look for in a strong manager and like, how did you and your current manager connect? I mean, it's really hard work, hustling, moving, you know what I'm saying? Accountability, you know? Uh, I got Alan right here who does everything for me. Um, he makes sure this shit is rocking. I've been over the world, I've been around the world with this dude, I've known him for three and a half years. 
and nobody has worked as hard as him as far as you know championing me, making sure I got this shit together, and uh, making sure I'm on my shit, and somebody being honest with me, and uh, just being a, a real family. Like it's supposed to feel like family, bro. It's not supposed to feel like, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Here's some bread. You know what I'm saying? It's not supposed to feel like that. It's supposed to feel like, you know, like you got friends in the room, like family. You know what I'm saying? It's real. Like it's always a business, but it's supposed to feel like family, dog. And um, you know, it's really the work that you put in, the hustle, and a mindset of never giving up. Because there's too many times where I'm like, I'm cool on this shit. Like I, I could figure out something else. But he's like, Nah, bro. You got to keep going and keep, you know, pushing. It's, it's more to this than what you're seeing right now. And saying what you're feeling just because, you know, of all the, the bull crap that goes on with the business. Like, I be cool on it almost every day, every week. And he's like, nah, bro. So it's really just the belief, the hard work, you know, taking accountability if we fuck up, telling me where I got to take and hold myself accountable. And, uh, yeah, man, I just, it's, yeah. And somebody who's smart, like, you know what I'm saying? You got to be smart. You got to be, you know, on, on your toes and how to think quick and uh, keep a, a, a good uh, attitude and, um uh, Controlling your emotions too. Emotions get heavy. I know sometimes I'm a fucking jerk, but uh, you know, we gotta find a way to get through that shit and keep hustling. These are all some really good questions. I wish we had more time because I know like we want to go off right now, but that's all the time we have. But don't worry, we're gonna be hanging out. So For make sure. sure you get some drinks from Lobos. Shut Aaron's up. gonna be in the back taking mm -hmm. some photos. Just want to give a huge thank you and shout out to BBC Ice Cream. Yes. Huge thank you and shout out to Hillary for making this happen. Come on now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And Aaron. Thank you so much for sitting down with us and chopping up. This was such a fire conversation. Thank you. If you guys are in the city tomorrow and you want to grab some last minute tickets to his show, go ahead and plug that real quick. Oh yeah, we at the Bowery tomorrow. Um, it's gonna be crazy. It's only a few tickets left, but if you can grab them, grab them. It's gonna be a crazy show. And we got Savannah Christina in this motherfucker too, so make sure you support her. Savannah's gonna be there, so come early. So, yeah, she right there. So, show some love. God damn it. Incredible R&B singer, incredible talent. She's amazing. And again, shout out to Lobo Tequila. They're set up right back there. Make sure you grab yourself a drink. I need you guys to give it up very loudly for Aaron Ray. Let's Thank go. Thank y'all, man. Bless y'all, man. Give it up for yourselves, dog. This will be here. Y'all made it here. Oh, shit. Let me not break the chair. <laughs> <laughs>